Hello everyone, today I'm asking one of the world's leading experts in canine aggression cases how to choose a muzzle, how to measure a muzzle, and what to look for. I'm extremely honored to welcome Michael Shikashio to talk on Channel Kikopup. He is the past president of the International Association of Animal Behavior Consultants, and he works exclusively with aggression cases through his website, aggressivedog.com. I'm gonna link lots of links and information about him in the description below, as well as information on this topic of choosing the right muzzle for your dog. Hey everyone. Have you been considering getting a muzzle for your dog? You're just not sure which kind to get or how to get the right fit for your dog? Well, this video is for you because we're gonna talk all about muzzles. So there's three things I look for when I'm shopping for a muzzle for a dog, and that's comfort for the dog. I want them to be really comfortable with wearing whatever muzzle I get for them. I'm looking for safety for whatever the dog is trying to bite or has bitten in the past. And I'm looking for the ability to be able to feed treats or food through the front of the muzzle. So let's talk about that comfort aspect first. So one thing I'll start right off with is these vinyl sleeve muzzles. You might have seen these before. And I don't recommend these from a comfort level, especially because they don't allow for the dog to do some of the things that I look for and the comfort of the muzzle. So being able to eat, drink, yawn, pant, or even vomit should all be able to happen with a muzzle on. And the only thing it's gonna prevent them from doing is biting in most cases. So these vinyl sleeve muzzles, unfortunately don't allow for many of those things. The dog can't pant or yawn. Uh, they are okay for a very quick vet visit or something where you, maybe an emergency scenario where you need a muzzle on a dog, but preferably it's always better to acclimate a dog to a basket muzzle that they could use in circumstances that they might need it. So it's always better to take your time and get them used to wearing a basket muzzle so you don't have to use one of these. So looking at the comfort, we often look at the weight of the muzzle. So we've got things like this biothane, uh, and you can see the little different sizes. These are custom muzzles from Boomer's muzzle. You can get them from Boomer's, or you can get another uh, company. Trust Your Dog is another great company that makes custom muzzles for dogs that have real tiny faces or real large dogs uh, when you might not find that type in some of the other brands. But lightweight is really important. Uh, certainly flexibility is also helpful when you're looking for comfort. Um, something like this is also very breathable. It's very lightweight. So very comfortable for most dogs. Uh, the Baskerville muzzle, the Baskerville Ultra muzzle, is one of the most popular brands of muzzle. Also very comfortable, also very lightweight. Uh, has a lot of nice safety aspects as well with the head strap to prevent the dog from pawing it off. And similarly with most other muzzles, they're, they're going to come with that extra head strap uh, for safety. So looking for those things, that when you start to go for uh, looking at comfort, if you get to some of the heavier muzzles, it might take a little longer for the dog to acclimate to. But for a safety aspect, which is the second thing I look for, I'm going to consider the dog's bite history. If they have a bite history with injury, typically I'm going to want something safer like this because it's much more sturdy and it doesn't compress if the dog tries to bite. Some of the other muzzles like, muzzles like this also prevent biting because they're very sturdy. Uh, just be careful of the vinyl style of this Jafco. The clear vinyl style is a little bit more bendable, so it presents a slightly more of a bite risk, but generally still very safe. Uh, when you start getting into more of the comfortable muzzles like this, again, uh, more comfortable, but let more of a chance of a bite happening through one of these muzzles. Uh, so if I have a high bite risk, a dog that's done a lot of damage or has bitten very frequently, I wouldn't recommend one of these for that. But most dogs, uh, most low bite risks are going to be just fine wearing one of these or the Baskerville Ultra Muzzle. So uh, next thing to look for in your muzzles is the ability to feed food through it. And so you have things like these food pouches that can be great for feeding through the muzzles. Most muzzles that you see here, we're gonna be able to do that. So even if you get a custom muzzle, like the boomers, you can cut some space out of there to tr feed food through. Now, of course, if you have a dog that is known to bite and uh, or rather grab stuff off the ground, so they aren't biting people or other animals, they're just stealing rocks and stuff off the ground and swallowing them, you're gonna, of course, want that fully closed. So that's a different use for a muzzle. Uh, and boomers would be a great one for that because you can get one that's completely closed so the dog can't actually physically pick any objects off the ground and ingest them. But most of the time, I'm gonna want something like a food tube or a treat hole where I'm gonna be able to feed treats through there. Most dogs are able to, once they get used to wearing the muzzle, are able to 
grab treats out of your hand if it's fit correctly, or you might be able to uh, feed them this way through some of the muzzles. Again, if it's safe to do so, and if the muzzles fit correctly. So again, the three things to look for is comfort for the dog. You want them to be very comfortable wearing that muzzle. Safety for whatever the dog is trying to bite. That's the most important part to make sure nobody is injured when we're using a muzzle. And of course, that there'll be the um, ability to feed treats and be able to do our training uh, for dogs that are taking food during our training session. So let's talk next about how to measure muzzles. And this is, think of this like you're buying a new pair of shoes, but you're doing it online. And that's how muzzle fitting, unfortunately, works in some cases where we're going to have to try, and on, try on a few different pairs uh, to make sure they fit correctly. And that's really important. Just like if you were to buy a new pair of running shoes, you're going to want to make sure they fit correctly because over time it can get uncomfortable or even dangerous if you're using the wrong pair of shoes. And the same thing can happen with muzzles. So be prepared to do a little bit of sending back and forth or maybe ordering a few different sizes of a muzzle that you want uh, and sending the other ones you don't use back. Um, and that's going to allow you to get, make sure you get the right fit. So measurements, um, you're going to want something that's going to allow you to measure, but be careful when you're using any kind of tape measure or anything that might scare your dog, uh, like a sturdy ruler or something. Uh, some dogs might uh, be afraid of that or they might kind of hear that sound and uh, not be okay with that being near them. So you can take uh, just a piece of string or, an, or a leash or something that the dog's fine with being around and you're going to use that to measure uh, the measurements you're looking for. So what parts do we measure? Depending on which manufacturer's website you go on, there's going to be different charts, different measurements. They're going to give you a general idea of sizing based on measurements you take. Um, and some of them are going to look for the length, the height, the circumference, and the width of the muzzle. So let's talk about those things. First thing you're going to look at is the length. And that's about a half inch to an inch below the dog's eyes. You're going to kind of have this line. And that's where the muzzle is going to be sitting typically. So if you have a, um, let's say, Jafco, um, it's going to be sitting right below the dog's eyes. So you don't want it, of course, up over the dog's eyes or blocking their vision or sitting too low. You're going to want it kind of just sitting there. This muzzle is, of course, too big for this Jack Russell, but uh, it's, it gives you an idea of where to start that measurement. And you're going to, that's going to be the length. You're going to start that measurement from there to about uh, just a little bit in front of the nose uh, where the nose would come out. So that's going to be your length measurement. Um, that's very important because if it's too long, we run the risk of it actually uh, doing damage to the dog or not fitting well, not being able to feed food through it. So there's a lot of issues if it's too long of a muzzle. Um, next thing you're going to look at is the height, which is you're going with that same line, about a half inch to an inch below the dog's eyes. And you're looking at just how tall that is. So you start from there and you're going to measure down to the bottom of their muzzle. So a straight line right below that measurement point there, and then down to where the bottom of their um, jaw would be. And you're gonna get that measurement there. That is with a closed mouth. So that's the height of the muzzle with a closed mouth. Next thing you're gonna look at is your circumference. Same thing, same measurement around. That's that half inch to one inch mark underneath their eyes. And going right about, you're lining up with right about where their commissure is would be. So the lips end uh, in, in a lot of dogs. Some dogs are going to be longer, but right about there, you can see there's a slight angle to that when I'm taking that circumference measurement. So you take that, and then you would, of course, measure that distance there. And the last measurement you're going to take is the width. So that's how wide the dog's snout is. And that's going to differ depending on the dog and the breed of dog. Some dogs are going to have much wider jowls or loose lips hanging down. So you're gonna to wanna to take account for that because if you don't take the widest measurement, it can be kind of jammed up into some muzzles. So you wanna make sure that you are measuring wide enough. You're gonna take all of those numbers, you're gonna to go to the manufacturer website and you're going to add a little bit to each of those numbers. So the length you might add about a half inch to an inch for the circumference, that's the one you're gonna add the most. Some dogs you're gonna add between three, four, five inches to that circumference because you want the pant room. So the panting is very important. If I'm going to get a proper fit for an open mouth pant, we're going to want a wide enough circumference to allow for that. So you can see here, this dog has a open mouth pant, tongue hanging out, having a good time, um, but uh, it's going to allow that circumference. So it might look big for a dog with their mouth closed when you're looking at a closed mouth 
uh, fit, but we want that space in there. Now this muzzle is too long for this dog. I just talked about it being too long. So we would want a much shorter uh, muzzle for this particular dog if I was to get a muzzle for this Husky. Stuffed animals have shorter snouts than uh, most live dogs. In fact, this is a Doberman muzzle. So um, you're going to look for a, about an inch of space, half inch to an inch of space in between the front of the muzzle and the dog's nose. We don't want the dog's nose touching or rubbing against that. Uh, this is the Dean and Tyler Freedom muzzle, uh, very safe muzzle, and it's got the nice comfort padding here for the nose. So um, good fit for this Husky other than the length. So I would want to adjust for that with the fit. So when you're fitting those, when you're looking at the measurements, remember that you might have to try a couple different sizes. You might even have to try a couple different brands of muzzles. Um, if you have a dog that is, let's say, a brachycephalic breed, a very short snout or a very long snout, you might opt for a custom fit muzzle if the dog's not a high level bite risk or biting people very se severely or other dogs very severely. You might look at a custom fit from Bumas or Trust Your Dog. So that's the concepts of fitting a muzzle and what to look for in a muzzle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and happy muzzle training and shopping. Thank you so much for that valuable information. Don't forget to check out Michael Shikashio's website, aggressivedog.com, as well as his extremely popular podcast, The Bitey End of the Dog. See you later.